18 away from the century for Richie Richardson. And uh, new, new batsman out there at the moment, uh, Vivian Richards, is the man who has come out. Joins Richie Richardson and faces Terry Orton. No third man for Viv Richards. Would be outside off stump there, I should think. There's Richards out there, replacing Dujon, who went for the straight drive. The lofted straight drive, I'd say. He mishit the ball. It went out towards Wood at mid-on, and a pretty straightforward catch for him. Certainly uh, have the impression that he was trying to lift it, and it was straight down the throat of the mid-on field. So, um, all the partnership there broken by that shot. Wicked maiden to Terry Alderman, who once again has bowled well. Wicked of uh, Carl Hooper early in the day. Hooper came out in place of Gordon Greenwich, who retired hurt overnight with um, a closed eye, struck in the eye yesterday, batting against Alderman, unable to take his place out there. Carl Hooper came out. He has that variation, and that did the trick. 3 for 57, his figures now. As he frustrates the bowlers a little bit, does Richardson every now and again pretends he's playing at the ball. Or certainly looks as if he's playing at it, but in fact, he's taking his bat out of the way. And uh, this is an example of just that. Notice how he just removes the bat from the line as it goes past the edge. It's the first time I ever ran into that uh, situation was uh, as a youngster playing against Kent. Colin Cowdery used to just open the face of the bat just a little bit. I really got quite disturbed. I thought he might be taking the mickey out of me. Did never get him caught behind. But he too used to play down the line and then simply take the bat away at the last minute. No ball called. Three for 192. Have to add 38 onto that for the overall lead. Nine no balls to McDermott. Perhaps that's the wrong way to phrase it. That sounds as though it's going into his credit column. I know balls against McDermott. Man behind Richie Richardson there has uh, plenty of worries at the moment. He has to go for wicket taking and containment. Never easy to do. You can uh, gather that he's looking at the containment side because he has a third man in. There's nothing the modern day player hates more than being asked to use a third man. Doesn't matter how many run off the outside edge for four or three or two or one. That border is using third man and fine leg now. There's the fine leg uh, way down there to the left of the side screen. Here's the um, fine leg and across on the other side and in from the boundary a little bit is the third man fieldsman. A lot of ground to cover those two fieldsmen. Mind you, the ground is lovely and smooth out there. This uh, surface a pleasure no doubt to field on. 
very smooth. Perhaps not quite as good as a bowling green and uh, the marvellous patterns out there created by the mower. Those patterns really are just the different lie of the nap of the grass. The cut away is the light area and the dark area is when the mower is running towards us and the nap of the grass lying in that direction. If you were putting out there, Richie, you'd have to putt a little more firmly in the dark section. It's a very good lesson there, I'll come back to that in a moment. Taylor is the fielder. That's the end of the over, three for 193. for 193. Richardson now has 83. Alderman the bowler. Just going back to that grass and the nap and the grain of the green out there, Tony. Speak. Yes, well, that's a tremendous uh, example of um, the work that goes on out here. The light section to the left there is when the grass is cut away from us as we are now, and therefore the nap of the grass lying away, you'd uh, have to putt a little bit more gently if you were putting on the light section. The dark section is when the nap of the grass is facing you. That's obviously been cut from the opposite side. That creates the pattern. Now, if you were a golfer, they tell me that uh, if you were putting into the dark section, the fact that the grass was pointing towards the ball would slow it up just a little bit more than it would if you were putting on the slighter, lighter section. Is that correct, Mr. Benno? It reminds me of uh, Peter Alice's um, number plate. He got the yips at one stage, and his number plate became putt three. However, ah, there we are. Golfing aficionados can stop beating their heads against the wall. We've spelled it correctly. However, I can tell you that long as I've been playing golf I still have the most awful trouble reading the greens but I'm in good company there there are about seven million other Australians who have the same problem it's three for 193 so it's uh, three for 193 what we're talking about uh, putting gives me the chance to remind you that uh, the Nine Network will be covering that uh, excellent golf tournament at Palm Meadows up in Queensland in January. That is a terrific golf tournament, won by Greg Norman last year. It's on from the 12th of January to the 15th of January, Palm Meadows Golf Course, which is a super course and uh, the Nine Network will be covering that Thursday the 12th of January, Friday the 13th, Saturday the 14th and Sunday the 15th we'll also be covering the Benson Hedges World Series Cup on the 12th and 14th it's a no ball called and um, the golf and the cricket will slot in perfectly. It will make for days of magnificent sports television. The marvellous tournament at Palm Meadows, the Benson Hedges World Series Cup, and that goes through Thursday, January 12, Friday the 13th, Saturday the 14th, and Sunday the 15th. And there are some great players in that tournament. Greg Norman, 
the 1988 winner, Curtis Strange, Ian Woosnam, Mark O'Meara, Ray Floyd, and many others. That uh, golf tournament is also being telecast direct to Japan and will go to various other parts of the world as well. Back here at the MCG. Master One Iron Blaster. Well, his cap went off, didn't fall on the stumps. It happened to a West Indian once on this ground. Joe Solomon. Well, that certainly bounced and uh, it certainly rocked the West Indian captain. Not uh, just back on his heels, but literally hit the glove. Off went his cap. He was quite lucky that didn't go down on the stumps. Border in the background sees the cap going. And uh, as it was falling, you could see his anticipation there of it dislodging a bale. You reckon uh, Richard was lucky it didn't fall down. McDermott was the lucky one, because the last time it happened, 70,000 people booed the bowler. Richard's calling now for the spray as well. That's obviously hurt his hand. I think Richie Richardson was into that shot almost before the ball left McDermott's hand. He's uh, almost licking his lips there, wasn't he? He actually got a little bottom edge on this. And uh, it went down into his tummy. But he really was looking to smash that one square on the leg side. It's all happening out there. Uh, this over ball is uh, doing some extraordinary things which is not going to be enormously comforting to the Australian batsman. Three for 197. 85 to Richardson, one to Viv Richards. Now Terry Alderman has the ball well, almost in his hand. Uh, a few deliveries have found the edges of the cracks out there. It's going to be a little more like the WACA pitch in the Perth Test match. It looks good out there. I simply can't work out how the ball is keeping it at such varying heights because it looks so good. David Boone. Is that well fielded by David Boone? On numerous occasions he's been very quick in this position at forward short leg. He did well to get a hand to that one. It's a pity he didn't uh, manage to hang on to it because he would have been able to flick it back at the stumps. And um, it may just have been that Viv Richards was uh, struggling a little bit to get back. Viv Richards has already completed his 100 test matches. In fact, he's now in 100 and on 102. So Richards has been through that milestone, that uh, tremendous milestone of playing 100 test matches. Seven and a half thousand runs at an average of 52. It really is outstanding. 23 centuries. So Viv Richards, uh, that's a breakdown of his overall test record. Let's have a look at those averages. The overall average is 53, and against England he's averaging 69. That's uh, the best he's done. So England really have suffered uh, at the hands of Viv Richards. Australia, he's averaged 47, nine and uh, five of his hundreds coming against Australia. Even India, Pakistan, New Zealand. He's averaging less than he has against England. Well, there's no question that hit a crack. 
Actually, be able to bowl a leg break that spun that far. Three for 198. Back out in the centre. Craig McDermott to continue. Be bowling to Vivian Richards. Just looking at uh, that test record again, Tony, as Australian figures, average of oh, almost 50, seems a far cry from the day he made his debut against Australia up at the Gabba, that's way back in 1975-6, and made a duck in the first innings, caught Gilmore bowl Lilly, and then was run out for 12 in the second, so he wouldn't say it was an auspicious debut, that's against Australia. Nor did, um, that's three for 200 West Indies, nor did Viv uh, have all that auspicious a debut in Test cricket as a whole because he played against India at Bangalore in his first game. He was out for four and three. He's come a long way since then, baby. Yes, he certainly has. A batting average of in excess of 50. He's absolutely outstanding. 800s against England, 2300s in all. Once again, movement, this time back at the right-hander. That one came back quite a long way. It went through the gate, as it were, and didn't touch a thing. These little uh, bits of movement won't go unnoticed by Viv Richards. And I was talking a moment ago about the ball flying off the cracks there. You were out there this morning having a look at uh, the strip on which they're playing now? Yeah, it's not many cracks, and uh, one of the ways of finding out whether the pitch is level is to run your foot over the top of the crack, and that really felt very flat to me. Mind you, that was just after the roller this morning, and um, that would have slightly changed since then. But quite a few little cracks down there, not many in the middle of the wicket, but as you get down towards the other end, they start to appear again. That's the length that uh, the bowlers are hitting a lot. You can just see the little red marks there. And uh, it's in that area where perhaps a little bit of... Uh, you can get Richards out hooking. It's over. And three for 204. Hind leg a bit square for the short ball or for the pull shot. A good player will notice that. And if he gets the opportunity and a ball like this presents itself, he will play a little flick fine. And that was a really nicely executed shot there by Richardson. He knew exactly where the fieldsman was, and so he played it fine. I was talking about Craig McDermott a moment ago. He hasn't looked free in this second spell at all. Some thought that he might have injured his ankle, the one that uh, was damaged earlier in the summer, but he's looked to be running in very awkwardly to me. Ten overs, no maiden, none for 42 in this spell. That includes four fours and six no balls. So in that particular spell of bowling, he's hardly got anything right. And yet uh, he bowled so well in uh, a couple of his earlier spells. Yes, he's uh, certainly had a tough time of it today. Big, strong, young man. But there are occasions where he tends to look a little muscle-bound, a little bit uh, strangled almost. Comes and goes a lot in terms of uh, the way in which he's bowling. He can produce a magnificent spell and yet on occasions it can all go wrong for him. In Brisbane he got three wickets in the first innings and then hardly bowled in the second. And of course he didn't play in the Perth test. So that cramp has come back for Richie Richardson. The serious injuries in this match have been Gordon Greenwich, who has a closed eye at the moment, closed left eye. Gus Logie has a broken nose. There are a lot of bruises around, most as many bruises as oaths used out there by the batsman in getting them. Richardson has cramp. There are one or two other little injuries around as well. Very well bowled. 
Yes, that was right up in the slot there, and Richie Richardson certainly had to bring his bat down quickly. Just started swinging in a little bit too. He hit it onto the instep, and uh, for a second he thought it was going to roll back onto the stumps. Whipped around there, and uh, realised that it wasn't going to do that. That's all for crack. And it's three for 208. Three for 208, Craig McDermott coming into bowl to Viv Richards. Just took a moment ago about some of the other injuries sustained and Ian Chappell can take you through one of those now. Back here in the commentary box, all just about to start again. Michael Holdings with me in the box and uh, plenty of excitement coming up here with the news confirmed that Courtney Walsh is on the field skippering He's had that little test run out there. I suspect he'll go off a short run, and then he may even go off the field. But uh, it's one of those things a captain never wants to miss what might be one of the key moments in his cricketing life. He's out there. Mark Taylor's out there, his opposite number. They were called in by the two umpires for a little incident, which uh, we haven't yet been able to trace. It didn't show up on anything... Uh, we had with our camera work and it may have been off the play it may have been uh, someone having a bit of a chat out there and the umpires took exception to it anyway it resulted in um, the captains being called in and then a little handshake at the end morning michael holding good morning richie good morning to the viewers around australia and hello to the viewers wherever else you may be I remember a similar incident in another country not far from here in New Zealand when the two captains got together, shook hands, but not much change took place. There's Ambrose. The ball so well in the first innings to continue here. They were looking for another handful, as they call it, to help West Indies in their quest to win this last test. Holden Holder is on the field. We saw Ryan Lara being injured running for Courtney Walsh. Don't suppose it's serious, but Roland Holder on for the time being. Yes, the new ball will provide a bit of extra bounce out there. Once the shine goes from it and softens up a bit. Then there'll be a bit less bounce, but those two balls from uh, Kirtley Ambrose certainly flew. The slip field is back a long way. And it's taken off there, and uh, it's head height uh, through there to Courtney Brown. Phil Simmons is at first slip, taking Brian Lara's place. Carl Hooper in his accustomed position at second. Robert Samuels, who's uh, a bit of a hero, I would think, at the moment in the Caribbean for that innings he played yesterday. Three of them there. The gully is very wide, as is often the case here at uh, the Wacker. Robert Samuels, the third slip. But, uh, man in close to the leg side. That's a big inside edge. Not too sure the West Indian fielders were sure what they were appealing for there. The first shout was catch it, and then how is that for an LBW? Well, I don't think you can get them both. Certainly, good shout. Didn't seem to hit the bat, but I'm not too sure why they shouted catch it. But, um, First over gone, and no runs. First over gone, the Australians trailing here by 141. Ten wickets in hand. Um, right on center. Matthew Hayden. Here, out there, he'll be well aware of that. Batsmen uh, sometimes dream about that sort of thing the night before they're going out in their second innings. Particularly opening batsmen actually be a king pair because he played a couple of balls before getting out got out to a beauty in the first innings one that uh, cut away from him now then it's uh, not going to be 
Courtney Walsh. Well, perhaps Courtney, Michael, is going to bowl uh, medium pace seamers and just try to drop them on the spot. I think more than likely that's what Courtney is going to try and do. Just bowl a good tidy line and length. Not trying to do too much, obviously, with his bad leg and hope that the other fast bowlers will be able to put in 100% and get some wickets while he keeps one in tidy. Ian Bishop is the man uh, bowling at the moment. That slip fielding formation, we've got a good view of it from uh, this end. I would suggest that uh, this can be very little get through to Phil Simmons. He's positioned there in such a way that Courtney Brown, if he has anything about him as a wicketkeeper, will get across on his left-hand side to take the catch going to Simmons. Well, if you want some idea of what sort of a pitch this is, you should uh, keep that in your video library. That will give you the perfect idea. Ian Bishop is very upset. He says, that's not my fault. He hit the crack. I didn't put the crack there. But there's nothing that can be done about things like that. Courtney Brown had absolutely no chance. Look at this. Hits the crack and takes off at 45 degree angle. Hello, he's going to go around the wicket now. I, I'd be inclined to stay over and uh, bounce a couple round about uh, the same spot that one went. And what we do know is um, there are a lot of cracks out there. I went out and had a look at the pitch this morning. I can assure you that uh, I wouldn't be at all happy to be batting on it. Go on, However, it's the situation uh, the West Indies batted on this morning. Increased their lead to 141. And uh, now the Australians have the job. But with Ian Bishop now going round the wicket, he certainly has quite a few more cracks at which he can aim. The difference now, though, is that those cracks are outside the off stump. So if the ball deviates off the crack, similarly to the ones outside the leg stump to the left-hander, those cracks will be very, very dangerous. We're only two and a third days into the test match. We've stacked enough incidents and general happenings out there to uh, run normally through a whole series. Some of them attributable to uh, the pitch itself. Now, Phil Simmons, I mentioned earlier, is the man feeling at first slip. That's the position normally occupied by Brian Lara. single there for Mark Taylor. He's off for Mark. Yes, Brian Lyra is off the field at the moment. He has a bruised foot and uh, he's been given the ice treatment at the moment. And this is why he's off the field. They went through for a single and Hayden was trying to intercept the ball and he's jumped or appeared to, uh, to jump to get the ball and uh, trod all over Lara's foot at the same time. But that wasn't the incident that uh, actually brought the umpires in to call the captains in. That was perfectly legitimate for Hayden to try to get the ball to throw down the stumps. And he just couldn't intercept it. But uh, something else happened after that. We're not quite sure what it was, but it was enough to have the umpires hastening for a little conference. And the beckoning finger went towards the two captains as well. Now this is the incident we were talking about where the umpires called the captains in. And that went on for some considerable time. We'll come back to it after this ball. I think we'll come back to it after this over. It's run for seven. 
Curtly Ambrose again. Now we're just going back to uh, that incident we were talking about. This is uh, the umpires talking with uh, the two captains. Now, apparently what has happened, we've uh, learned, is that there was uh, something said, quite a bit of it, off the play. And there was quite a bit said yesterday, apparently. Now, today, both teams were at it both teams being the fielding side, the Australians, and uh, the batting representatives. And it was uh, a lot of back chat. And the umpires, apparently, we're told now, called the, um, uh, called the captains together and said, OK, that's enough. We've got both teams having a problem with both teams. We want it to stop now. And if it doesn't stop now, then there will be a report to the match referee. And uh, after that, it was conveyed to the two captains. Skipper Courtney Walsh took off his hat and his glove. And uh, the two captains exchanged a fleeting touch of the fingers. So that, I suppose we could say, is the aftermath of yesterday, when uh, there was even more chit-chat going on out there. A lot of heat and frustration. And uh, they used to be known as the men in white. Now they're men in the Panama hats and all sorts of other things, representing National Grid, the International Umpires Organization. But of all the things that have happened over the last couple of days, I liked more than anything Michael Holdings' uh, little note about Robert Samuels who said that he feels that uh, when he's out there batting he's uh, being given a sex education lesson I think that covers the whole thing adequately you can work out for yourself and gone Mark Taylor is gone beautifully bold that is as good a delivery as you will see I reckon on replay we'll see that that has started round about middle and off and then found the outside edge and gone through to wicketkeeper Courtney Brown. Beautifully bowled. Had to be played at and found the edge. Well, I think this certainly shows that Curtly Ambrose is a great yeah. fast bowler. Anyone who had doubts before, those two deliveries, the one before just beating the outside edge and then immediately putting it exactly where you should. It's one for seven. Beautiful bowling from Curtly Ambrose, the last ball of uh, that previous over. Greg Blewett is the man out there taking Mark Taylor's place. Great delivery from Curtly Ambrose. And it's uh, Hayden to take strike. Blewett the non-striker. In the air. Three field is going towards it. None can quite get it. Two to Hayden. But, uh, an over convincing two. Two great balls in uh, that last over from Curtly Ambrose. This was the first one where Taylor played and missed. And then... And then just the fraction further towards Miss Dump. Same movement, this time the edge. That man has such good control, Curtly Ambrose, can pitch it exactly where he wants to pitch it. Vivian Richards, one of the greatest cricketers the world has ever seen, leading West Indies here in his 100th Test match. And he's leading a team of experienced cricketers, no matter what you might have uh, been reading and listening to, the West Indians between them before this Test match have chalked up 519 Test efforts. Geoffrey Dujon is a most experienced player, He's played 55, Malcolm Marshall, 58. And the Australians, in contrast to that 519, have played 287 tests. Here's the first ball of the test match in Bill Laurie. Thank you, Richie. And Jeff Marsh off the mark with a single. It's 
Great moment for Marsh. There'll be butterflies out there this morning. Tremendous tension at the Gabba. Against a team that has four fast bowlers. Border has won the toss and elected to bat on what appears to be a perfect batting wicket. As David Boone takes his guard. Fire O'Connell. Marshall opting to bowl into a strong westerly breeze. Going from the members end to three slips and a gully and a short leg. Wonderful atmosphere, plenty of tension for Boone and Marsh, the established pair for Australia. Nice even bounce. It's encouragement for the batsman. It's a very good batting track. Straight through to Dujon, waist high. Michael Marshall will attack David Boone just on off stump. This breeze coming from right to left in the screen will encourage the outswinger. It's a westerly over about 20 knots. So Marshall opting to push up into the breeze rather than come up the hill. It's got a bit close, just aimed it down leg side. Half a shout from Marshall. Very close to the stumps. Angle just going down leg side. It's nothing like the first morning of a test match. The nerves will be there for the batsmen, the bowlers and the fieldsmen. Perfect day here at the Gabba. It's almost a wide and it'll rush away for four. No, they'll cut it off. Ball is a bye. Very wild in swinger going way down the leg side. If swing, Dujon just getting a glove to it. Australia no wicket for two. Alan Border won the toss, elected to bat. The conditions are perfect. Malcolm Marshall of an indifferent first over of a swing but lack control Vivian Richards his 100th test match Just altering his field slightly three slips and a whitish gully Patrick Patterson to take up the attack In Volta Street end Vivian Richards in his 100th test match here at the Gabba. Marvellous player for West Indies over the years, one of the great players the world has ever seen, and we'll be paying a special tribute to him during the tea interval today on the Nine Network. One of the most entertaining cricketers the world has ever seen. Richards is the first slip, second is uh, Gordon Greenwich, third Richie Richardson. Geoffrey Dujon has had a problem or two with uh, niggling finger injuries, but uh, he's declared himself fully fit for this game. Too. He's a brilliant fielder, Carl Hooper. Roger Harper we talk about as being one of the great fielders we've seen. Carl Hooper is in there to field at cover point. Very quick to the ball, moves well from side to side. The alert fielder success stories of the younger West Indian batsman who play off the back foot as well as the front
Patrick Patterson has played some cricket down in Tasmania. He's been around quite a number of places, played county cricket in England as well. He can be decidedly quick when he slips himself. First outside edge for runs. Doesn't appear to be a lot of swing, but Marsh was well over the top of that. Handled it pretty well in the end. Just angled it away through the gully region. But not a lot of bounce for the West Indian pace attack so far. The rolling of the wicket, sometimes it takes five or six overs before you get a true indication of what bounce is about. But so far it's been a, quite a comfortable bounce, about waist high. I haven't seen a bouncer bolt yet. Shouts of catch it, but uh, no edge there. Six on the board without loss. That's the forecast for today in Brisbane. Friday the 18th of November, first day of this test series between Australia and West Indies. Couldn't be a more perfect day. Fine and warm, temperature 29. Nice day to win the toss and bat. It used to be the tradition to do that on just about every occasion, but um, there have been many times in recent years where the opposition has been put into bat. Viv Richard said today he would have put Australia in had he won the toss, so Alan Border has made a brave decision. Marshall keeping the ball up, looking for some swing. Getting Jeff Marsh onto the front foot. Stroke that nicely into the cover position. leg is the fielder at short leg brilliant in that position although in England on uh, the recent West Indian tour a few occasions where I thought he was fielding in too close he missed chances that came very sharply at him Hooper is the man out at cover point. He's fielding in that position for both the bowlers. At mid-off is uh, Kirtley Ambrose, very tall player, as tall as Joel Garner, and uh, a very promising bowler. The assistance from the pitch, and uh, he is quite a handful. David Boone taking a chance. He's not quite sure which way the ball was swinging and thrusting out the pad. One remembers when Dennis Uli trapped Gordon Drenage LBW in the test match. The Gabba not offering a shot. Ball just outside the line of the off stump. David Boone a little hesitant at the moment. Ambrose at mid-off. End of the over. And David Boone is four. Jeff Marsh two. No wicket for seven Australia after they won the toss and decided to bat. And Patrick Patterson is the bowler from the Stanley Street end. Marsh taking strike.
bit of uh, repair work being done there by Jeff Marsh, but there uh, won't be a great deal of need for that out there. This is a magnificent looking strip of turf. That's a good eye. That's good judgment by Marsh. It's probably the way to pay these guys, make them bowl to you. That cut back, but it was never going to take off stump. And the ball was bowled to the batsman. Certainly not a lot of bounce. The ball was dying as it went to Dujon. West Indian fieldsman Logie is the man at short leg. All wear the protective gear these days. Very necessary sometimes too. Great characters of the cricket world, Desmond Haynes is fielding at gully. Quite a deep gully. Is there for the square cut or the thickish edge rather than the uh, false defensive stroke? He's away on the left of your picture, wearing the white hat. Forms uh, that marvellous opening partnership with Gordon Greenwich. Just a bit of lift there. Uh, good over from Patrick Patterson. Michael Marshall. Shot for no ball. Umpire Peter McConnell from Western Australia. School goes on to eight. This is the man on uh, whom West Indies are basing most of their chances of bowling out the Australians. He is a great bowler the occasional great bowler come up and he is definitely one of them. Marvellous record in test match cricket. The test matches in England recently took 35 wickets at an average of 12.65. Five times three times five wickets in innings and once ten in a match and he had a strike rate of a wicket every 35 balls bowled it's the ability to move the ball either way in the air is off the seam as well and that's the man himself from Barbados 59 test matches, made his debut back in 78-79. One of a long line of great West Indian fast bowlers. Uncle Marshall swinging the ball both ways, but just lacking a bit of control with his in-swinger ball to move away to the leg side but starting at about middle and leg and going wide down the leg side for Dujon to move across and a few words now from Bob Willis on Malcolm Marshall. Malcolm Marshall is the best bowler in the world because he does so much with the ball apart from let it go quickly. 
He can swing it both ways and even beat a batsman on the outside when bowling wide of the crease. He always wants to bowl and is a captain's dream. He possesses a brilliant slower ball and devastating bouncer. He's phenomenally accurate and his brilliant strike rate make him one of the greatest bowlers of all time. And here's Marshall again. bit of an inside edge there for David Boone. Bob Willis has pointed out that Marshall is very accurate. Today he's back to a little bit of a control. The ball going over the stumps as well. Certainly a magnificent performer at test level, Malcolm Marshall. Great competitor. Beautifully bowled. A little, little bit too well bowled, actually. It swung too much. Could have missed leg stump. No wicket for eight. No wicket for eight. Chief Marsh been very consistent this summer. 29, he's played 23 test matches, along with David Boone, who's formed a partnership that's really steadied the ship for Australia's top order. Really values his wicket, has great concentration, and a real fighter. David Boone has really established himself after in the out start to his career. He's 27 and played 32 test matches. Final round player now can have the front or back foot. Or strike with the ball when in touch. combination does run well between the wickets. They've batted together 36 times as opens for Australia and the confidence grows. Early call from Marsh, quick response from Boone. Patrick Patterson, 27, in his 14th test match. They're quite lively. He's keeping the ball up. He's not bowling too short this morning. He's making the batsman play almost every delivery. That's an indication of what we were talking about a little earlier. That was appreciably faster than uh, half a dozen of the previous balls. That's where the end didn't have to play at it, but it got through to the keeper with plenty of bounce and pace. Words between skipper and keeper there. Always a good idea for the wicket keeper and the captain to work together. The keeper sometimes can see things from exactly straight down the pitch that might escape the skipper. A bowl again, good spell from Patrick Patterson, none for nine, Australia. No wicket for nine, conditions perfect at the Gabba for the first test. Australia won the toss, selected to bat. Crowds building up, 29 degrees forecasted today. Nice westerly coming across the ground. They're a little bit quiet. You can feel the tension on the first morning. Pace attack of the West Indies. Led by Malcolm Marshall. Very good crowd in. A working day. The Gabba at its best. The outfield's fast. The wicket looks perfect. It's a clear day. Not 
the cloud cover that one can get of the morning of a test match, which will give the batsman a lot of confidence. It's a good seeing day. Conditions are close to perfect for batting. It's a bit there for the bowlers as well as one would expect on the first morning of a test match. There's always uh, just a little bit of life there that fades as the day goes on. But uh, one of the more striking things about the climatic conditions is that there's very little humidity here today. Normally Brisbane can be a bit steamy, a bit muggy, but uh, not today. 29 degrees and humidity only 32%. Logie at short leg. Just a reminder that Alan Border won the toss here at the Gabba this morning. Decided Australia would bat. Dean Jones is 12th man. The batting order, we understand, is Mike Valletta at three and Graham Wood four. With Border going in at five, then Steve Waugh and Ian Healy. Tony Dottermaid. Ian Healy must be a useful performer if he's getting in ahead of Dottermaid, who Made such a good start to his test career. Good indication of the fast outfield Bill Laurie was talking about. That just ran off the outside edge and uh, got three parts of the way to the boundary before it could be pulled up. That's one of the problems Viv Rich Richards will face when you've got an attacking field. The batsmen who work the ball, they'll get full value for their shots. Malcolm Marshall is backing a bit of control this morning. Plenty of swing, particularly the in-swing is going, but he's been pushing it well down the leg side. That just takes the pressure off the batsman. We'll be watching Marshall running close to the stumps for the outswinger. So far he's concentrated on pushing the ball from off to leg. Now we're up to 12 Australia. Uh, Patrick Patterson just about to bowl again from the Stanley Street end. Coming into the commentary box, Tony Cozier. Warm welcome to Tony. Travelling with the West Indies side and long-time commentator with Nines Wide World of Sports. And alongside him will be Max Walker. Morning, Richie, and thank you. Morning to everyone. So here's Patrick Patterson. Boone the batsman. Or here was Patrick Patterson. He has to start all over again. 